Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. I'm talking to Jason Heidel, the founder of MakeGrandmaSmile.com. They are a culture-focused engagement therapy and technology company looking to standardize the engagement and behavioral health side of senior care. They just held their first aging and Alzheimer's telethon full of music, games, and interactive lifestyle classes. So thanks for joining me, Jason. Thanks for having me. You're yeah, welcome. You're, you're my first interview after the big event. So. <laughs> well, it hasn't been too long, and yesterday you guys had some pretty nasty weather. So <laughs> Yeah, tornadoes. Uh, I remember being like eight and having to hide in the bathroom because there was one nearby and you know how terrifying that can be yesterday my 18 month old just thought it was a visit to the basement because he doesn't get to go down there often so he was very excited very different experience for him <laughs> i believe it i'm in northern california so no i'm not familiar oh, with yeah. tornadoes at all no no you got I, you got you got earthquakes right well and i've lived here you know my entire life i'm a multi-generational californian and so when the 1989 i know that was 31 years ago nearly loma prieta happened mm -hmm. i was completely clueless as to what was going on i was driving my car been married a month and all of a sudden it was like what's going on here i think i right. have a flat tire better pull into the gas station pull in the gas station check all the tires oh nope everything seems fine okay i don't know what's going on okay get back in the car drive like a block or two the radio station cuts out and i'm like what the hell like i've been married <laughs> a month and now the car is about to blow up okay yeah, this jalopy <laughs> yeah. and it was only two years old it was a two-year-old honda civic so i'm like oh, hello wow. this is not good yeah no those things never die uh for nope. sure Nope, I had two Civics. The last one is a 99, sold it in 2016. It's still running. You know, it's weird because we were just at the telethon and, and really like, so people know, like you can go watch the telethon live on our Facebook, but honestly, the reason we did that was we have a lot of talented friends who are really hard to pin down all at once. But if you pick a date and make an event, they tend to show up. So we did it as a way to like kind of, uh, of create these mini vignettes of why we're doing this. Cause for so long we've put out content saying why, but it's not been from us. It's been from our vision and like creating, you know, uh, media content. Um, and, and so we wanted to really present, we, we had a live event plan for outside and three days before the event, uh, the town, changed the amount of people who could come to an outside event to 50, including staff. And there was 25 team members there helping us put on the telephone. Oh, so no. we had 25 people outside. Uh, we did get to capacity, uh, but the, it became a focus for us just to kind of really from our mouth, say why we're doing what we're doing with make grandma smile and with ultimately Alzheimer's and aging and how technology is greatly going to affect that in the next five to 10 years. And so, you know, it, one of the segments we did was make grandpa smile because we own make grandpa smile.com too. And so our goal for the make grandpa smile mission is that there is not a lot of content driven towards the male dealing with aging and Alzheimer's. There just isn't there. There's, there's stuff that you can find, but there's not, there's not stuff that's just made for that, you know? And so we are partnering with a few different car groups and um, journalism groups to create a Make Grandma, great Make Grandpa Smile content um, like page. And what it's gonna be is, is all this different content that's already being made by creatives all over the country in one place, like cool cars of yesteryear and then cool cars of today. A lot of people say that you know senior citizens don't care about 2020 and i beg to differ considering i had um you know 20 30 residents showing up for iphone how to use my iphone classes at senior communities so like the people we're dealing with now are very different than who we were dealing with maybe five ten years ago i, I think i told you but like my grandmother would not touch the television and change it from the like the live feed of the lobby of her apartment building because it required two remotes and that was just one too many. And like, that is not who we're dealing with anymore. So like, I wanted to show them the Hot Wheels cars that are gonna be our cars that we buy when we're 65 and having a midlife crisis. And like, I, I wanna show them the Audis and the Impalas and the, but like the really tricked out ones. Cause you know, for me, the idea that Alzheimer's is just an old person thing is, is A, wrong, but B, also, hey, hi, I'm sorry, I got a dog here. Uh, but, but also, um, you know, 
it's we're going to be there if we're lucky you know we're going to have that similar experience and what's going to be important is the stuff that i have uh for me that are important to me it's going to be important that the people who work at those communities understand that even if it seems old to them and so for me it's like how do i take things that you and i probably already watch like all those uh, a and E channel shows and like TLC channel shows about cars being flipped and houses being flipped and interior decorating and turning antiques into cool new things. Like that's going to be what we want to do when we live in these buildings. And so the telethon was a way to say, what is the senior community of the future going to look like? And how can we start building that today? That makes sense. It'll Good, be, I'm glad. <laughs> it'll be, I'm thinking like, well, let's. Well, actually, I like a lot of like analog stuff. Like, okay, I, um, I make handmade greeting cards. Cool. I need a. Do creative, you use a cricket? Um, no, I use. It's not a cricket, but, but it's I, like that. I use something similar. Okay. Less, less but so you're not you're not sitting there like with a scalpel the whole time. No, I have a machine that punches stuff out. No, but like that's the difference, right? Like, because like our grandparents would have made hand cards, but they would have cut everything out by hand. And so, like, I have residents that I've worked with that know how to use a cricket. How cool if I turn them into an army of oh, get well card makers for all the residents who don't have families and are at the hospital and just need a little encouragement or even residents that don't. Like, if you're running a, a senior community, and I know people that you tend to talk to are more like the loved ones taking care of them, but, like, if you had a senior community that needed outreach into the community, uh, into the, the residents of the community that don't live there, having your own team of seniors who can make awesome handmade cards and say, come join us and make cool things, that, that's such a great sales tool. When you're talking about people taking care of their loved ones at home, having a senior know how to use technology is, is, is just like having them know how to use a power tool, just like having them know how to crochet. It's just where their experience lies, right? And so we always talk about care plans and meeting residents where they are. Well, like I've worked with like people of industry. I worked with a guy who was the accountant for Warren Buffett. Oh, so like wow. these are not dumb guys. These are not dumb girls. These are, these are women and men who lived lives and now are at the point in their life where they should be able to just enjoy it. And, and so for me, it's like, how can I make your passion for math again a thing? How can I make your passion for photography a thing? In 30 to 40 to 50 years, I'm going to assume it's 50 for you there, Jen, uh, th when you're living in a senior community and, and you are, are wanting to be the one at the event taking photos, I hope to God that there's someone like me that's like, I'm going to get her a nice camera. I'm going to make sure she knows how to do it. And I'm going to let her be the photographer. And I might only ever get pictures of feet. <laughs> but if you are happy, I've done my job. You know, like that's that's truly what I'm trying to do here. Well, you make me curious as to what cameras 50 years will look like. Right? Like, They're going to be they, this big. Well, I have one that's that big. It's called a GoPro. That's true. Then, that's, true. Um, that's true. I have, you know, an iPhone 11 Pro Max, whatever the latest. My business partner just got one. They're nuts. It's like yeah, there's seven like, cameras on the back. The, cam the cameras are awesome. Yeah, I mean, you still need somebody like me that knows lighting and posing totally. and all that stuff. But, you know, I'm, I'm almost tempted to try some shots with my phone in a portrait session, which I have one coming up, so I might actually do that. So how did Make Grandma Smile come about? Um, well, uh, the official story is me and my business partner, Garrett, met in the liquor aisle at Jewel. That's a grocery store. He was wearing a lab coat and looked like Jesus. And I was talking loudly on the phone, trying to not draw attention to myself while trying to read the back of his lab coat. When I couldn't read it, I walked up to him and I said, Garrett, I, I didn't say Garrett. I didn't know his name. That'd be weird. I walked him and said, I'm sorry, man. I don't mean to bug you, but what do you do? And he says, I teach science to children. I said, oh. Would you want to teach science to senior citizens too? <laughs> he goes, yes, I would. And that's it. And like, here we are three years later. I've been doing the senior care thing for about nine years, uh, going on 10. Um, I started out as an entertainer. And I just noticed that when I came, people who were, I was told would not come out and I was told would not participate. And I was told um, would not remember me, did all three, every time. 
and and not like they didn't say Jason maybe necessarily, but they knew me. And there's there's a difference in memory and emotional memory. And when you're when you're dealing with Alzheimer's, we're talking about emotional memory. So for me, that's the most important because that's what I do as an entertainer. I'm an entertainer first. I started out in in um, the you know random like improv community and stand up comedy and and doing little side gigs here and there, playing the acoustic guitar. I was a worship leader and I, I performed for, I did youth ministry stuff. And so music's always been a big part of my life. I was lucky enough to go to schools um, where music was a huge piece of the curriculum and not just seen as like an afterthought. And I had teachers who saw talent in me and helped me grow it. And, you know, I think for me, the biggest thing that really stuck for why Make Grandma Smile needed to exist was, I kept finding more and more residents that didn't want to just watch the show. They wanted to be a part of it. And I know that feeling. I know that feeling of being in an audience and being like, what am I doing here? I am on the wrong side of this. <laughs> and so I had to think like, how do you become a performer if you've never performed? And I'm like, it's education. Well, okay. And so then all of a sudden the Montessori model started popping up right as I figured this out. Okay, cool. And I know it's been around for a while, but like it really started catching, catching steam there. And so I'm like, well, I'm on the right track. So I'm going to keep going with this. And then I kept figuring out that, that my programs, no one else was doing even in the communities. Like the stuff I was doing wasn't hard, but because of the way I was presenting it, because of the way I packaged it, it I was getting hired to do things that normal activity directors would normally do, but couldn't, or at least couldn't to the level that would keep the, the residents engaged as long because to them, they're an employee. And to me, I'm the main event, right? And so how do you create that main event feel all the time and at the same time empower the people working at the communities to be like experts without needing to be experts? And so this kept coming to me. And, and, and one of the things that, that I think was a pivotal moment for me in understanding why education for seniors was so important was because, um, well, it's really two moments. It's, it's, I, I saw a, a TED talk with a doctor who um, put a high speed internet computer in the middle of a third world country, completely weatherproofed it and just left it. Solar powered, ran itself, but didn't show anyone how to do it. And then a little four year old girl walks up and starts to learn that the mouse pad works. And that if you put your finger here, something moves on the screen. And then they, they kind of put two and two. It. And then they, she showed her older brother. Oh, and he put a webcam so he could see who was using it, right? And so the older brother comes up and figures out you can click. So now they're clicking on things and they're hearing noises from the computer. And now years later, they're streaming all over the world. They're doing all these amazing things. And, and all I heard in this whole thing, and he ends the whole thing with, we will learn what we want to learn. So hard. how do we make the things that we hate to do that we know are the things for a balanced life, like eating well, sleeping, exercise, blood flow, socialization, spirituality, asking questions, educating ourselves, growing as people, both mentally, morally, and physically. How do we make that fun and make it something we want to do? And I had a, a, a guy I worked with for a while that um, changed my mind on performance um, that was always saying, if it makes the audience smile, it's worth doing, even if it's at your expense. And I kind of just owned that and, and made it about, if it makes people smile, it is worth doing. And my goal is to make who smile, make grandma smile and make grandpa smile. And so that's where the name came from. And, and at first people didn't know what to do with it. Now, like, you know, you hear that name and tell me you don't want to know more. You know, that's the point. I want awareness. I want the fact that there are 5.5 million Americans and two point, uh, with Alzheimer's in America right now, and that 2 million of them, 2.2 million of them are men. You know, like all of that stuff. I, I've said that to people and I, I'm shocked who doesn't know that. Because we all know someone who knows someone who has a grandma or had a grandpa or a father or a mother or someone who had dementia or Alzheimer's and, and, and yet we still don't seem to really know how to peg it. I still see people treat it like, like the word senile, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what we used to call them. I know they're just senile. Like, no, there's a very neurological, cognitive, behavioral thing happening, chemical even, and we can do things about it today. And so um, the more and more I studied, the more and more I, you know, I went through dementia practitioner training, and, and it just came to me that at the, at the end of the day, there's more room in this industry for people like me, and I need to be able to show artists, show creatives, show educators, that, that these people are not people who are done living life. If we just gave them something worth learning. 
I agree. My mom's community, they did a lot of bingo, coloring. They'd bounce the balloon around right. each other. And yeah. I was always surprised. My mom didn't participate in the coloring. Mm -hmm. um, she would occasionally do the bingo. And then I was really surprised she did the, the balloon ball bouncing thing. And the one right. day that really surprised me, I, I always went on Mondays and I show up and I'm like, uh, <laughs> where's my mother? <laughs> and they're like, oh, she's on the bus. You know, they, I guess they drove around town and I don't know what the heck they did because her visual processing was so bad that you could be like, oh, look at the pretty cloud in the sky. And she'd be like, oh, huh, where, oh, huh, what? And, or whatever, you know, right, just right. What, what her eyes saw, her brain didn't see. And Holy. it was really challenging. So I was really surprised the day that she was, and they said, oh yeah, she goes on the bus every week. And I'm like, oh, okay. But normally mm -hmm. they'd gone on Wednesdays and for whatever reason, they switched it up that week and they just forgot to tell me. And they, they came back within about 20, 30 minutes. So I just waited and it was, it was unique, but you were talking about how when you would show up in the communities, they would remember you last September, I showed up on a Monday to visit my mom and she looked at me and she goes, Oh, where are we going? And I was like, first off, I felt guilty because I had just gotten home from a trip like oh. at two o'clock in the morning or one o'clock. It was very early and I was tired and I'm like, I don't want to take her out because I was afraid that my lack of energy would sure. translate into something negative and then we'd have sure. an issue. And so I felt really guilty that we weren't going out that day. And I was really surprised. I'm like, wow, after, you know, a couple of years, she recognizes me as the person who takes her out to do fun things. We'd always go watch kids play in the park or um, we'd go get a snack or something. And, but usually we watched kids. That's what she liked to do. And, you know, it gave me a minute, a few minutes to just kind of chillax and watch the clouds go by or just For sure. put my head back and, take some deep breaths. It was always very useful. So that was, that's what we did. So I, like I said, I can understand how when you said they recognized you, it was because you were giving them that, that positive feeling. Right. Well, and, and it's interesting. Cause like, you know, I'm, it, it's really nice to hear you say things like I was worried that my emotional place would cause them emotional stress. So often on these support groups that I read, um, I see the words, uh, how do you deal with your loved one? And it's like, you're not dealing. They are dealing. You are protecting, making sure they're safe, making sure they're happy, and making sure that they are dealing better. 100%. And I get it. It's hard. And I know that not everybody's loved one was a loved one growing up. And for those cases, like, that's deeper than my pay grade will allow me to speak. You know what I mean? But yes. when it comes down to the ones who are, are at a loss, not because um, of bad blood between family or anything, but because their mother or father is not who they were before. Um, the, the, the thing that strikes me the most is healthcare professionals don't seem to give you any advice on how to cope with this as the family member. Nope. That is a missing piece, and I cannot believe that we're just like, good luck with something you know you're going to lose. Yeah. That's just, like, because don't get me wrong, like, Alzheimer's is bad, but living with it doesn't have to be. You can make the most out of it, and you can make lemonade. And, and, it, and, it's, and it's not hard. I mean, you just listed a few things, the balloons, right, the bingo, the coloring. Now, there's going to be studies out there that say bingo causes stress. And so it shouldn't be done in senior communities anymore. And, and to be fair, for some residents with cognitive impairments, it can be. But it's more than that. Like, we've come up with what a standardized and community activity program looks like. And, and I'll just lay it out for you. Not every place runs this, but there are many that are cookie cutter. And if you go into them, this is what you see. It is bingo. It is coloring. It is playing old movies on television in black and white when most of our residents are now from the 60s and know things uh, 50s and 60s and no things from the rock and roll era and no things from the Beatles era and no things past Frank Sinatra, right? Mm -hmm. um, the activity uh, staff is one to two people, maybe three, and they're doing things with 30 to 40 people at a time and having a group of 20 around one table doing nails. And um, that's the activity for the morning is nails because you only have one staff member and so you can't entertain and also do nails. And then on top of it, you are... 
um, left with minimal supply budget. So everything you're doing is a coloring sheet or a, um, you know, simple watercolors, donated crafts, donated odds and ends that you turn into crafts, um, playing little games that you read out of a binder. And like, that's it. Like, like it is a clinical way to care behaviorally. The issue is, is that the Maslow's hierarchy is upside down when it comes to behavioral care. It is the body first and then everything else. But when activities approaches a problem or a behavior or a resident who needs more purpose, needs more engagement in their life, we need to approach it from the top down. And so when clinical, who is very important and needed in this industry, we don't have an industry without them, is handling the body up and behavioral is handing the mind down we meet in the middle of this beautiful little diamond and everyone's taken care of on a holistic level. We talk about holistic practices. We talk about being able to give an all encompassed care plan when people move into senior communities or when you're taking care of your loved one, they say, you know, make sure it's well-rounded and balanced, right? Like, but what does that mean? And so because there's no standards, I mean, some, some skilled nursing facilities, the standard of activities by the state is 45 minutes of engagement a day, 45 minutes. And that includes doing the crossword puzzle on the back of the daily news bulletin. And like, that just ain't it. It just isn't like we could do more. And so uh, for me, I hear you be like, my mom remembered me as the one who was going to do something fun. Like you were doing it right. You being a creative, you looked at it as a creative problem with a creative solution. But not everybody thinks like you and me. And one of the problems I always had, and, and my mentor, Tracy Reich, uh, who was my first activity coordinator, she works for uh, Senior Lifestyle now, um, but she worked with me at Lexington. She told me, I love what you do. Put it in a box so other people can do it too. And that was like nine years ago. That was like eight, nine years ago. And I was like, how did I put me in a box? That, that was the <laughs> worst sentence you could ever tell me. Yeah. But then I realized sure. she wasn't saying you go in the box. She's saying, take all of the things you do, put it in a box and make it teachable. And so that's what we've done. We've come up with the Make Grandma Smile engagement curriculum. And the idea behind it is that someone like you and me could turn it into a business and be a recreational therapist style uh, uh, position, uh, life enrichment coordinators, uh, engagement specialists, that sort of thing. Um, or the person at home taking care of their loved one could have their own activity program to run at home that allowed them both time off from focusing on the loved one 100% because it had engaging things that kept the loved one busy, had tools provided for you in what we call the Make Grandma Smile Go Bag, and has a standardized yearly calendar that allows you to follow it that follows along with digital content that gives you how-tos so you don't have to be the expert. You can just be the facilitator of fun so your loved one looks at you and thinks you're the coolest. And so you never have to run out of ideas. And so that's, that's what we're building. We're building this idea that anyone who wants to take care of their loved one as they're aging or dealing with Alzheimer's can and no longer have to ask how, it's now what. That would have been nice because there was a lot of Sunday evenings. My husband would say, well, what are you going to do with mom tomorrow? i be like, oh, God, I don't know. Because you know, right. I like variety. I don't right. watch reruns. I don't reread books. I do eat leftovers. That's fine. But everything else has got to be new Sometimes and different. That's true. <laughs> That's probably the only reason why hey, I'm going to let these guys in. We got Hello. Guests. It's Jinsey. Jinsey. Hi, Jinsey. She Hi. is a past guest. And she is also the, an author of several books. Oh, cool. So we Welcome. were just, we were just talking you. about um, activities and how on Sunday nights I would be like, try to figure out what to do with my mom. And, you know, her abilities were less and less. And my need for different was not less. And it was just a big challenge. So... Well, and so uh, just to catch you up, Jensi, you know, one of the one of the thoughts that, that Make Grandma Smile has is that, um, you know, you might have heard in the industry, like, a senior citizen doesn't care about anything 2020. And, and I disagree, because I show my residents America's Got Talent. We watch new episodes every week. And oh, every yeah. time they want to know who wins, and they want right. to see that golden buzzer pressed, and they're crying their eyes out. And they leave talking about it at lunch, like they were there. 
You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and we flip it because it's never just a watching thing. I think one of the other things that, that, that family members always have and are worried about too is that their loved ones are just in front of television. And, and I agree, just sitting and watching television isn't great. I, I binge watch Netflix too, but the the changing something from an active engagement, I'm sorry, a passive engagement to an active engagement is the key. I was able to watch an entire old Christmas movie in black and white with seniors, and they paid attention 90% of the time, I'll give some of them 80, uh, because I would pause and ask mm. them questions about the movie. Not even the characters or even the actors, sometimes situational. You know, she's really upset. Why is she upset? I must have missed something. And they're like, well, he uh, was, you know, she said she loved her base. She loved him basically. And he didn't say anything back. Oh, okay. Okay. They were paying attention and I just proved yeah. it, you know? And so for me, it's about changing that passive engagement where I'm reading from a book and turning it into game show hour, which is what we're going to do in a little bit. Uh, and, and so like, you know, we could turn anything into a game if it's repeatable. And if it's repeatable and it uses their existing abilities, you can maximize function. We tested this in three communities with a group of 10. And, uh, and, and, and to be able to see a bunch of residents who I was told like, oh, they, they like to do things, actually participate in grand scale activities and contests and competitions was, was super rewarding. So that, that's where we stopped before you joined us, Jency. Hi, Christina. Yeah, we Hi, Christina. Chris and now we have Fran Bowman. Christina Excellent. is a retired educator, so she's she's Excellent. kind of adjacent to what you're doing, and mm -hmm. um, she was actually the counselor for my daughter when my daughter was in high school, which was several several years ago. <laughs> I was up fifteen at that time, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so was I. <laughs> and Fran Bowman, she does tutoring for children. She also does tutoring for incarcerated juveniles. She is the past president of our Rotary Club here in Brentwood. Cool. So, well, thank you for coming, ladies. But you're very welcome. Um, I'm a bit nervous about the whole thing. <laughs> it'll be easy. Me too, I, I, Me listen, too. if I can get a bunch of 60 to 80 year olds to do this and do it well and competitively, I can have a bunch of young broads like you figure it out. We'll be good. <laughs> I well, think he's off to a great start calling us. <laughs> can you tell I've been on television before? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, describe us again. Did you say young? Oh, yeah. I want to hear that again. <laughs> I mean, listen, when, when I hang out with 101 year olds on a regular basis, oh, we're, we're all young, young honey. We're okay. all in our prime right now. You know what I mean? Live it up. Live it up. I still got, I still got jiggle here in a good way. I'm okay with it, you know? So yeah. My grandmother is yeah. 102. Wow. Oh, yeah. Good uh, for her. She's one. Yep. This is yep. bonus miles. Yes, for sure. <laughs> so we're going to pause for a second and get the game set up, and then we will be right back in just a moment. Growing up, I loved nicknames. I have been known as the guy with a hat for almost a decade now. And half of it's out of necessity, but the other half is because... I found a job working with senior citizens and doing performing arts. And when you work with senior citizens, they remember you for very specific things. Like the guy whose shirt is always wrinkled, or uh, the guy who's always a little too loud. About nine years ago, I met Margaret Vincy Help. She was the inventor, or as she always said, God's tool to create the beehive hairdo. It's an iconic piece. Everybody from Barbara Streisand to Audrey Hepburn had it and wanted it. She made it. But that's not where it stopped. Margaret lived a life that just took her everywhere, all over the world for different award shows, education seminars, because she understood how important it was to spend every day learning something new. And when I met her, Margaret was 95. And in her words, Probably getting ready to go see God myself. I always loved Margaret because she was real about it up front. Now, you're 95 years old, you live in a senior community, you've seen the world, what else is there to do? Be an actress, of course. She heard that we were doing a drama club and that 
there was a chance for her to be in a play. And she literally willed herself to feeling better, getting out of bed and showing up for rehearsal. On that day, I took over the group for another person. And on that day, mine and Margaret's life changed forever. Because throughout the three years that I got to work with Margaret, I figured out that it wasn't about entertaining people, it was about engaging. How can we engage each other and the world better? Margaret taught me that. Because every day, Margaret walked through the halls like she owned the place, but that you belong there too. So let's go out into our world. Let's go act like we belong. And let's make sure everyone else does too. For Margaret's sake. My name is Jason Heidel, and this is why I make Grandma smile. So we're back with Jason, and now we have three other guests because we are going to play Password in a way similar to what Jason does with his residents. So first up is Jincy. You guys remember her. She is a past guest. And then we have Fran Bowman is a resident here in Brentwood where I live. She's also in my Rotary Club. You've heard me talk about that. She's a past president of our Rotary Club. She's a tutor for juveniles and she does lots of great things. And then we have Christina, who was the high school counselor when my daughter was in high school, which we're just going to pretend was a couple of years ago. And Christi <laughs> Christina just told us that she feels she might have a predisposition to Alzheimer's. So she's very interested in continued learning. And Jason was telling her about neuroplasticity. So why don't you guys all say hello before we get started? Hello. Hi. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Super hard on, on Zoom with the delay. So, uh, That's it. <laughs> Jen, you mind if I take it over from here for the game? Go for it. Thank you so much. Ladies, welcome so much. And those watching, welcome to Game Show. Uh, my name is Jason Heidel, and with MakeGrandmaSmile.com, we are going to play Password. Password is the simple game. Yeah, everybody. Uh, password is a simple game of words, one word answers, one word clues. Two people on each team will take turns giving each other clues to try to get them to say the secret password. You cannot say the same word. Uh, you can say the same word more than once if you think it's a good clue, but you cannot say a word that has the clue in it. Um, also, uh, we are going to have the honor system tonight. We don't have our official Make Grandma Smile blindfolds, but we are going to have our eyes covered for those not uh, guessing. And uh, I am going to be presenting the words on my phone. So uh, we are going to start off. Why don't I have Jennifer and Jincy? Why don't you guys cover your eyes? And Fran and Christina, I'm going to show you your first word. And the word is... Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. <laughs> Everyone always reads it out loud. And then I'm like, okay, next word. You got your words, ladies? Got it. Got it. All right, words gone. Fran, Jincy, go ahead and put your hands down. Um, uh, Fran, I'm holding a number between one and five below the computer. What number is it? Four. Four. Christina, what is it? Two. Christina got it. It's two. So, Christina, you're going to give the clue first. Go ahead and give Jincy your first one-word clue. Shopping. Shopping. Center. Center. I see where you're going. Uh, Fran, your turn. Stone Ridge Mall. Stone Ridge Mall. I'm going to assume that's a <laughs> proper name. I'm going to let it slide, but we got it. We knew what it was. Oh, we no, can't it's, say proper name. No, you can. You can. Ellen what? never always, never followed the rules. I don't either. Oh. <laughs> uh, especially when Betty White was on. My gosh, he let that, the, the rules slide for his soon to be and then later wife. Uh, very good. Fran with the first point. Fran and Christina, go ahead and cover your eyes. And Jennifer and Jincy, your word is this. Got it? Mm -hmm. yep. Ladies, go ahead and cover your eyes. And I believe Christina went first last round, so team one goes first this round. Jennifer, go ahead and give your clue. It's exercise. Class. Class. Exercise class. Go ahead, Miss Jincy. Run. Run. Jog. 
<laughs> Jog is the word one to one on both sides. Excellent <laughs> job. Great Thanks. work. We got a tie game. We'll do a couple more words here. This is flying. Can I tell you, you guys are already doing better than people uh, probably only 10 years younger than you um, in their 30s. So, uh, oh, wait, wait. Uh, oh, wait. Yep. Cover eyes. Okay. <laughs> You're so trained already. This is wonderful. Okay. You ready? Christina, Fran, here's your word. Got it? All right, ladies, come cover your eyes. And I believe, Christina, you go again first. Fighting. Fighting. Boxing. Boxing it oh. is, right oh. on the dot. That is number two, two to one. Team two <laughs> taking the lead here. Uh, Christina and Fran, cover your eyes. Jennifer and Jincy. Here's your new word. Okay. Got it? Oh, okay, yes. All right. Go ahead, uncover your eyes, ladies. And I believe, Jennifer, it's your word. What about hybrid? Ooh, hybrid. Car. Car, oh, hybrid car. <laughs> uh, agency? Search. Oh. Engine. Engine three for oh. team two. Oh, that was Rushing a good one. It. Wow. That was a real good one. Nice move. I did not see search engine coming. So I, I was expecting like I was expecting like Corvette or you know, like motorcycle. Yeah. It's the mental telepathy thing we've got going. Oh. <laughs> Let me tell you, when you watch the old episodes of Password, some of them they got that. And some of them That's I don't know true. how they got on television. So <laughs> We, you know what we do with the residents? Quick pause. We actually watch the old episodes and play oh, along smart. to practice. Oh. So we pause when the word pops up, and then we see how many words we can come up with. And as the resident hears their word said by the celebrity on television, you remind them, hey, Janice, she's got your word. And they're all like, oh, yeah, I did it. All right, cool, <laughs> right? And so it's that padded success we were talking about before. You know, you want to yeah. make it so they can win, even at a little level. Uh, everybody's doing great, team two. You're doing especially great. Uh, I believe, Sorry, I believe, <laughs> cover your eyes, Ginny and Jen. And Christina and Fran, this is your new word. Got it? All right, ladies, lower your eye. You lower your hands, lower your eyes. That doesn't work. Uh, um, and uh, I believe it is Christina's turn, right? I think so, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Flintstones? <laughs> Rubble? Let's see. What was that? Rubble? <laughs> Rubble, no, not the words we're looking for. Uh, good, good clue, though. Uh, Fran. Belunker. Belunker. Um, must be like, well, it's one word, right? I'm thinking I only rocks. know what it is because of context. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be rocks. Uh, it's not rocks. It's not hmm. rocks. It's not boulders. Uh, Christina. Paul. Quarry? Quarry is not the correct word we're looking for. Miss Fran? Underground. Cave. Cave, there it is. Team one with two points. We have a score of two to three. Uh, excellent work. We're gonna go uh, two more. So uh, team uh, two, if you get this, you've won. Team one, if you get the next one, you have a chance to tie the game and then go for the final round, okay? Ooh. The winning team will do a lightning round and the prize will be my admiration. Okay, <laughs> let's get your next word. Oh, have I run out of words? Hold on. There we go. All right. Your next word is. Okay. Now, remember, a couple meetings there. Have fun with it. Uh, I believe, Jen, you've got it. Yeah, we got to get this. Okay, dokie. So we have a election. <laughs> Primary. Oh, <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, Miss Jincy, you can win the game right now. 
final draft. <laughs> uh, Jen. Okay. So we are, let's see here. How about military? General. Yay! There it is! <laughs> All right, you're still in the game, team one. Tied game, 3-3. Three, three. We're going to go to our final word. And this one's going to be a doozy. Fran, oh, Christina, <laughs> here is your final word. Oh. All right. Go ahead, ladies. Drop your hands. We can. And I believe, Christina, you've got the first take. There's two ways I can go. Um, dash. I see it. I see it. Uh, dash. Uh, Sprint. Sprint, uh, yes, but no. Uh, <laughs> Fran, go ahead. Nuts. Hmm. I'm thinking bolts, but that doesn't go Oh in my that. gosh, that is a form of the word. I need the proper form. Oh. You said bolts. I need oh. the proper form. Bolt, you got it. Give it to them. They oh, win yeah. the game. The comeback kids, Jennifer. Very good. Congratulations. I how Dash goes with Bolt. Yeah. 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 I was going to say Usain, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, is this is capital why B. I host. This is why I host. Capital B, yes. Okay. Uh, gang, thank you so much for being a part of this. Did you have fun? Yes. Could you see how this could be fun for seniors, even from a distance? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's the point is that like, it doesn't have to be this hard. And I know that other people can do this at the community and we, we tell them they should. Like, we believe that this is a game you should do right now. But how cool is it to have someone who actually was on television, knows how to host a game show and can make it feel like the real password. And when we do it, we have real graphics coming across the screen and, and we interact with you. Like there's a timer and we're talking to nice. you. And so that breaks that fourth wall down and no longer are you just watching something, you're a part of something. And so that's what Make Grandma Smile is all about. Very cool. That's yeah, wonderful. really nice. Thank you, you so much for being a part of the game. Big, big one more time for our winners, Jennifer and Fran. Nice job. Thank Do you guys you. have any questions for Jason before we sign off? Yeah. Hi, I think what you're doing is really exciting. Thank you for including me. Yeah, oh, no, it's great. You. Yes. I, do, I, I love it. I'm going to uh, definitely go check out your website. Yeah, please do share it. Our Indiegogo campaign is up right now. We are looking to crowdfund for the start of the streaming service. Um, you know, there's 5.5 .5 million Americans with Alzheimer's. If everybody who knew somebody gave us a buck, we'd be good. And, and not for us, not even salaries. Just get the darn thing up and running and make sure it's out there in the world. You know, I, I've worked with communities that have $50 for 100 residents for an entire month for activities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that means they never get entertainment. But with our streaming service, they're going to get live concerts streamed straight to them from Motown and, and classic standards and swing. And, and we're partnering with venues that are going to host those type of shows and other content creators. Um, you know, MakeGrandpaSmile.com, we own that as well. And that'll be a portal for men and for the things that men want to learn about and still do as they age and get older. And, and so, you know, we really believe that we can help create a way that everyone can engage the world better, whether you're nine or 99, but prepare yourself for that 99 and hopefully give yourself a leg up to get there. Jennifer, send us the link, okay? I will definitely do that. Um, so okay. then I, I do have a question based on Please. what you just said. So are you saying that this is more geared towards the women than the men? No, just that we know that there's a calling right now needed for the men. Um, when you go into like a senior community and they have what's called like a like an interactive portal that has content for seniors, it tends to lend itself towards women. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just have a very specific initiative called Make Grandpa Smile dot com. So as not to forget the two point two million male. Americans who have Alzheimer's in America and and specifically focus on making activities interesting for them because often I can't get the guys to always come to the to the activities that a community that I can get the women but I can almost always get the women you know what I mean and given I'm a male so like a pretty girl might have a better chance getting the guys but the point is is that 
it shouldn't be like that. It should be easier because the activities and the content that's available covers everybody and not just like a white female in her 90s. Like there's there's just so much more. We do what's called a DNA, a decade. Uh, what? Oh shoot, the end change. The decade neuroplasticity analysis. And so what we're doing is, is we're basically figuring out what content our residents in a group of 10 know based on decades. So we show them all the greatest things from the 50s, the, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. And we figure out where their cutoff is as a group on an average. And then I'm able to tailor the content down into a focused thing, you know. So, so again, these are all things that we can teach people to do from home and know your loved one better and work with them better. And, and we even believe in like this little small group model that we're talking about called the REM pod, where 10 families like you guys who have loved ones who might need help with this could just meet and be a small group, same like you have at a church, but you're building your lives together in the Alzheimer's realm. Now I get that that becomes hard as people fall out because their loved one passes and they wanna get on with their life. And so it there is some like, almost AA or Rotary Club style, like I'm a member type of thing needed to be there, you know, uh, of even ones like Jennifer. I mean, her mission hasn't stopped, you know what I mean? And so for, for me, it's finding more Jennifers and, and more people like you all who she's found and bringing them back into the fold of like, listen, we've been through it. We've been there. How can we make it easier for those who are in it now? Because Alzheimer's is bad, but living with it doesn't have to be. And so that's what we want to change. Right. Wonderful. Excellent. Yeah. There's huge need. So thank you. No, thank, thank you. you for listening. Yeah. Share it on make grandma smile.com. Fading memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.